the highest recognition that the Catholic Business Network can offer to a Catholic man or woman who through his or her life witness exemplifies those qualities of faith, leadership, character, and service that are the pillars upon which the Catholic Business Network of Prince George's County so proudly stands. This award is presented annually to a Prince Georgian who has enriched his or her church, community, school, and profession through an unwavering personal integrity and a desire to be a force for good in the world. Our 2014 hometown hero is a man who meets and exceeds every aspect of the criteria that we have established. Tony attended St. Camilla's grade school and Good Council High School. He is a graduate of the University of Maryland. And he has worked in the financial services industry since 1988 and has through the years distinguished himself. He is a man of generosity and passion who gives of his time and talent in remarkable and life-affirming ways. Tony is a two-time past president of our Prince George's Catholic Business Network. He has through the years served on the St. Jerome School Advisory Board and the Elizabeth Seton High School Board of Directors. Tony has also served on the board of the Notre Dame Education Center, which offers programs to help inner city Washingtonians acquire literacy and technical skills in order to receive their high school equivalency diplomas. During his period of service with that center, Tony was not only a financial, a generous financial contributor to the work of the center, but also managed their investments without charge. As many of you may know, our hometown hero loves to cook and has over the years managed to combine that avocation with his desire to be of service to a variety of nonprofits. For several years, Tony's offer to cater a home-cooked dinner was the highlight of this gala auction. He also has volunteered as a sous chef at Miriam's Kitchen, which serves the homeless both food, friendship, and respect. Tony is an avid and skilled hunter who donates all of the game from his hunting to Miriam's Kitchen. Tony has also been actively involved with the Armed Forces Foundation, the Wounded Warrior Project, and the National Intrepid Center of Excellence. He has sponsored and organized events for our wounded warriors and has well often cooked for Fisher House, where the families of wounded military are housed while their spouses receive medical care. His most recent project was to organize classes on financial literacy for wounded service members who are undergoing treatment. Another of Tony's special charities is a wider circle, which is a nonprofit organization that provides basic needs to families transi transitioning out of shelters into independent living. Whether it was filling a truck with the basic necessities and heading to Hurricane Floyd victims in North Carolina, cooking meals for the homeless, or extending a hand in friendship to military veterans returning home. Tony Lawback has never walked away from someone else's need. Perhaps Tony's most lasting legacy of service comes from his own journey as a pancreatic cancer survivor. Tony has established Tony's Heroes, whose fundraising efforts support pancreatic cancer research. Each June, they join with the National Purple Stride Walk in Washington, D.C. to raise awareness, hope, and money to fight this disease. To date, Tony's heroes have raised over $34,000 and are one of the top fundraising teams in the D.C. area. The dictionary defines a hero as a man of distinguished courage or ability who is admired for his bravery and noble deeds. Tony Laudat, it is the unanimous opinion of those of us 
gathered here tonight, those that could not be here with you, but are here with us in spirit, and indeed all who have the privilege to know and work with you, that you are indeed a hero. You have made your church, your schools, and your community a better place because of the life you have lived and the good you have done. You are a man of faith, hope, love, generosity, and stewardship. And tonight, we proudly recognize you and celebrate you as our 2014 Hometown Hero. Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in congratulating and welcoming to the podium Mr. Tony Lawback. sitting at the table before dinner and uh, among other things Heather was discussing some of the faux pas she made during some speeches of hers and I thought how timely <laughs> so if I get through this it's going to be a minor miracle but here goes I, I, I guess first thing those of you who've known me but haven't seen me for a while the, the picture and my bio is a little bit different than <laughs> what you see right now, but actually not having hair is, is a pretty good thing. I, I shave twice, I don't know, every four months or so. <laughs> no razors, no shampoos, no haircuts, and best of all, I still have more hair than all three of my brothers combined. <laughs> I do want to congratulate all the award recipients and our students tonight. You, know, you awardees, you, you demonstrate the best things about our faith. And you scholarship winners, you demonstrate that you get it. My prayer for you all is that you always get it. That you never forget your faith. And you always remember that service to others is incredibly important. For me, there are three tenets of my life that help me live what I call a live life well. And many of you have heard me say this before over time. Three things, charity to others, gratefulness, and the knowledge that I'm never alone. They've all been a part of me for a long, long time, but never more so than since I was diagnosed a couple of years ago with cancer. Charity to others. It, it's important for all of us because life is not about me and it's not about you. It's about others. For me, it's my friends, it's my family, and yes, it is those who are less fortunate, maybe. Um, I learned about life, or, or I've learned about charity to others early on, as I think most of us do, and I didn't realize at the time I was learning it, and of course, I learned that from my parents mom and dad, but especially my dad, who's a retired physician and who's also celebrating his 86th birthday today. Happy birthday, Dad. As a, as a youngster, I remember Dad always, it seemed Dad was always taking care of religious, for whether, whether they were the Sisters of Notre Dame at St. Camillus, uh, DeMatha, Good Counsel, 
Trinity Missions. Those of you who remember, remember Trinity Missions down in uh, Langley Park, I guess you'd say, right near St. Camillus. Uh, that volunteer down at Edgemead School in Upper Marlboro. Uh, so many things, and, and he never uh, did it with any fanfare. That just helped out. It's just, just what he did. And even today, I hear stories about things, Dad, that you did that don't surprise me, but motivate me. And one of those I heard from a friend, Molly, um, years ago, don't know how long ago. It was summertime, Molly and her family were in their backyard having dinner in June. And out of nowhere, a tree branch just broke off a tree and it crushed the table. And Molly was hurt really bad. Uh, she didn't work for seven months. And Dad talked to her all the time, asked her how she was doing, never once asked her when she was coming back to work, but he paid her every single week until she came back. And nobody knew about that, but Mom, Dad, Molly, her husband, and her kids. And I don't think any of my siblings know what Dad did. Um, it's just the way you are. And I learned from that. And with that in mind, in the bar that you set and the example that you set, this award really isn't mine. It's yours. And you go home with it tonight. <laughs> Even as I grew up, more and more more and more motivation from other people, whether it was the Sisters of Notre Dame, uh, the volunteers I see at Miriam's Kitchen who are young, they're, they're in their 20s. They get up at five o'clock in the morning and drive down to DC and they work for two and a half hours cooking in a hot kitchen and then they get cleaned up and they go off to work. These are 20 something year old kids who just wanna help. They do what they can to help. I think about the, the people who formed years ago the Catholic Business Network of Prince George's County and the people who still work today to make this group what it is. I mean, we're at almost $500,000 and it's a, it's a handful of people who run this organization with the help of lots of others, obviously. Uh, but it's just amazing to see the work that people do on behalf of others. Um, closer to my family, is a story about my brother Chris. Chris loves to read. And years ago, he volunteered to help a young man learn to read and write. And for four years, Chris worked two nights a week with this young man, teaching him to read and write. That young man now owns a successful business that employs 15 plus people. And over the years, he's probably touched 100 lives. And it's in part because my brother took time out twice a week to help him learn to read. And what do you think gives my brother more satisfaction? Doing what he did to help this young man learn to read and become a success and contribute to society or find himself a new car, a suit, a TV, or, or something? You know what it is. Um, if we're lucky, we get to see the fruits of our labor. You know, Cap Mona mentioned it earlier, and, and Cap, you, you, you hear it. Every now and again, people get back to you and say, and say thank you. Um, but it doesn't matter whether we see the end result a year, two, three, five years later. In, in one case, I was really fortunate in that I did. Years ago, I met my friend Stephanie Solari at St. Jerome's when we worked on the board. And some years later, when I was on the board of Notre Dame Education Center, and we were looking for a, a way to raise money, <coughs> Stephanie suggested that a friend of hers, Margaret Allman, might do a show for us to raise money. That was in about 2000. And in 2005, Maggie became my wife. Now, 
Was that karma? Was that luck? Was that God's way to say out a boy to, to both of us for doing the right thing? You know what I think. You know what I believe. For you young people, those of you still in college or in high school or you, you eighth graders moving on, a couple of things to think about. I didn't always have the financial resources to help people as much as I wanted. So I decided to do things about which I was passionate and help people through them. That's how I got involved in Miriam's Kitchen. I love to cook. So I volunteer and I cook. I do love to hunt and fish and shooting sports. And although I didn't, wasn't my original idea to work with vets, I actually talked to a friend of mine who did. The light went on. And for the last few years, at every opportunity, I try to help those men and women. It, it's incredibly satisfying. And so, so just think about that as you all get older and you grow. It's going to be a while before you have the financial resources to help people. And that's OK. That's all right. But think about things about which you're passionate and see if you can parlay that into a way to help people in need. If you need motivation, you don't have to look very far. You can look to your parents. You can look to the volunteers who help out at your school. You can look to your friends who are already involved. If you need something a little bit bigger than that, think about Pope Francis and the message that he sends out about charity and service. And if you need something even bigger than that, then just pick up a Bible. The second tenet is gratitude. I give thanks every day for what I've been given. And it's easy for us to remember or acknowledge the gifts we have. We wake up in the morning, we flick a switch, and a light comes on. We go into the kitchen, and we turn a valve, and we get cold water. We open a fridge, and we get something to eat. We get dressed for school or work, and we decide which of the five pair of shoes we own or more we're going to put on that day. And there are millions of people in this world who have none of that, some of them in our own country. And for all the good people do, they never will. But we have that. So, you know, I'm a guy who was diagnosed with cancer. And, and I know some people think, well, what on earth do you have to be thankful about? If you know anything about pancreatic cancer, uh, you'll know that 95 out of 100 of us will die within five years. Three quarters of us die within a year. I'm two and a half years into this. And I'm going strong. Those of you close to the community. I don't know that I need to be thankful about much more than that. That I, I woke up this morning. I woke up pain free. And, and chemo keeps things in check, keeps things in check, and Every day new therapies are being developed. So I'm incredibly grateful for the day I'm given. But even, even more important than that, I'm a people person. If you don't know me, um, and you should certainly understand if you know me, I, I love people. And I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for my family. I, I, I'm grateful for all of you who came out tonight. Uh, I, could, I could go on for 20 minutes with specific things that people do for me and, and ways in which they enhance my life. But half of you are probably falling asleep now and are ready for me to sit down. <laughs> uh, almost, almost. Um, I, I, I call all of these people closest to me my heroes. They're Tony's heroes. And I'm blessed and honored with all that people do for me. Uh, gratitude. Just, I'm filled with it. 
And again, for young people, if you, if you can't find a reason to be grateful for what you have and the gifts that you've been given, then be grateful for what didn't happen to you. Be grateful that when you slid into second base, you only sprained an ankle and you didn't break it. Be grateful that when you were driving with your mom and you got to that little fender bender, it wasn't a fatal accident. Um, again, in my case, as soon as I was diagnosed, a friend of mine reached out to me. I hadn't talked to him in a long, long time. March, March Meyer. March was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer a year before me. By the time March was diagnosed, her cancer had metastasized to two or three other organs. And March lost her battle in January. Well, again, I was diagnosed, couldn't operate on my tumor, but when I was diagnosed, the tumor was still in my pancreas, no spread. And two and a half years later, it started to spread, but it's been kept in check. Um, those of you who've been touched by cancer and have had to go to chemo have been in oncology wards. Um, I've seen young kids in oncology wards. And I don't know that there's much worse than seeing a 12 or a 13 year old kid with no hair sitting next to his mom and dad who are trying to be incredibly brave for him or her. It tears your heart out. And I'm 55. 53 when I was diagnosed. Why do I have to complain? So think about that. If you can't be grateful for what you have, be grateful for what you don't have. Third is, is this whole idea that, that I'm by myself a lot, a lot more since I was diagnosed, but I'm never alone. And think about what that means for just a minute. There's a huge difference. None of us are ever alone. We may think we are because we're by ourselves, but we're not. God is with me every step of the way. He's, he's, he's with me in spirit. He gives me strength. And he does it not just through his presence, but through all my heroes and all my friends and my family. And it comes in various ways and at various times. When I was first diagnosed, I used to pray for strength. I, I, I just I needed strength. I prayed for strength every day. You know, don't, don't leave me hanging out here, Lord. Um, and earlier this year, it took me two years, I'm not exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. And, <laughs> It took me two years and I figured out I never needed to ask for that because God gave it to me anyway. I got it. I didn't need to ask. I no longer pray that he will cure me of cancer. He didn't give me cancer. But I no longer pray for a cure. My prayers are always about thank you. You gave me a day. I woke up this morning and go to bed at night. I had a great day. And, and the sense that I'm never alone carries me. It carries me every single day. And it can carry you all as well. I don't know if my glass is half full because I believe in charity and I believe in, in the fact that I'm never alone or gratefulness or if it's the other way around. And it really, really doesn't matter. But if you live with those three things in mind, I think it'll enhance your lives, you young people and those of you my age. So think about that and, and hopefully it improves your life and it keeps you going strong in the, in the face of some adversity. Um, a quick announcement and then I'm done. And it was actually, uh, the timing couldn't have been better in trying to raise money for, I would have called it the uh, tuition assistance fund 
Uh, what's the name on the card? The emergency fund. Um, we don't always know what our actions are going to do and, and how they're going to be perceived and whether they're going to elicit a response. And uh, I, I mentioned this, Cap, for you. Uh, two years ago, Cap made the tremendous gift, announced a tremendous gift to Catholic Business Network through all these scholarships. And I remember sitting in the audience thinking, boy, I would really love to be able to do that. And Maggie said the same thing. I'd really love to be able to help out. Uh, drum roll, please. <laughs> well, Maggie and I discussed it, and we want to help out. And we've agreed to pledge 25000 over the next five years to help with that tuition assistance fund. <laughs> You don't know what you started, uh, but thank you. you. You gave us a little bit of a push, and you got us thinking about it. We, we have the first check for John tonight. But thanks again for this award. It, it means a tremendous amount to me. I'm honored and somewhat humbled, uh, but very, very grateful that you chose to select me as your hometown hero. God bless all of you. And